So we were just filming a video on this little Rosie, and uh, I was getting a little bit crazy on uh, turning up the power. So what we have right now is our battery voltage and our current coming from the battery. And this is a 3600 watt inverter. And uh, if I put some load on this, you can see over here on this meter, we're drawing 22, 28, 40. Like I can crank it way up, right? And what happened a moment ago is I cranked it all the way up. We were drawing 105 amps off of this battery, which is about 5,000 watts at 50 volts. And uh, after a few seconds, the battery shut down, kind of like that. And what dawned on me is that uh, we just drew over 5,000 watts from a 3,600 watt inverter here. And that's quite a lot, of, uh, a lot of power. So Alex, my cameraman, was asking me if we did a surge like this in his apartment, would this reflect on his power bill? Well, the simple answer is probably not. And I asked him, what do you think uses more power, your fridge or your microwave? And he guessed the fridge when the correct answer is the microwave. And where a lot of beginners get confused is the difference between power and energy. Energy is how much is consumed over time. Power is in one instant. So in the case of the microwave versus the fridge, the fridge uses less power, more energy, because it's running constantly, whereas the microwave uses a lot of power, but it's only for a short duration, so the actual energy consumed is much lower. And utility companies bill for the energy they delivered, not the power they delivered, some exceptions in California. And in this case, we were drawing a lot of power out of the battery, that's why it was overloaded. However, once this battery resets from its overcurrent protection mode, we'll still continue to draw energy out of the battery. We just have to do it at a rate equivalent to what the battery is capable of. So that's your quick lesson on the difference between power and energy.